Here we go, okay guys. Welcome back to This Mom Life. I'm Tara and today we have a very special guest. This is my grandma, Grandma Carolyn. I grew up in Arizona with um, all of my grandparents around me so it was a very special childhood. We would do pool parties at her house, barbecues. I, I remember coming and watching the basketball games. Did you guys watch the Suns mm -hmm. all the time? We were Sun Sam. Yeah, which seems funny because we're so not athletic, most of us. At least my family isn't. Since I started doing the This Mom Life show, I just really wanted to get her interviewed and get her perspective on, you know, mostly motherhood and her experiences and lessons learned and also just the difference between being a mom in the 50s and being a mom in 2020. Do you want me to start going down the list? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start at childbirth. Okay, childbirth. We didn't have epidurals. The spinal block was just coming into being when I had my first child and that numbs you from the waist down. Mm -hmm. And so your recovery time after childbirth is a lot longer. It does kill the pain, but it kills it too much. Mm. So you, it's hard to push and everything you do yeah. with an epidural. Were you at the hospital? Were husbands allowed in? I was at the hospital. Husbands were not allowed. I can remember Max, my husband, standing at the window in my room, which was an outside window. Mm. and standing at the window talking to me. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> I was cute. in labor. Oh. <laughs> they wouldn't let him come in. I Would you have wanted why. him in? Because sometimes I feel like women are like, yeah, we don't really, like this no, is just I, a thing. I, I wouldn't mind him coming in. Yeah. It would have been a good thing. <laughs> so he stood by the window, that's so cute. <laughs> and the big difference, let me tell you what it was. The hospital bill for three days was $125. <laughs> and, and they charged me $10 a day for the baby. So then, okay, so some other big differences with having babies. Um, did you do all cloth diapers? All cloth diapers. There weren't any pampers or throwaways. Yeah, it was all And so. <clears throat> but was it like the flat white ones that you pin? Or did yes. they have some no. like sewn together ones? No, it was the, you folded them and pinned them. <clears throat> and did you have like rubber pants to go over and it? rubber pants okay. over them. Mm -hmm. So then the rubber pants would keep them, keep everything in because I always thought with, with cloth diapers, it's still got to be a huge mess. Yeah, you had rubber pants. Okay. We also had a washing machine, but it's not like our washing machines now. There was a tub and then we put everything through a wringer that squoze most of the water out of the clothes mm -hmm. and then you hung them off the clothesline to dry mm -hmm. and they sure did smell a lot better hanging in the sun drying mm -hmm. than you get even with the sheet. Really? Oh, you're saying so even now with a, with a dryer sheet, you stick yeah. it in the dryer, they smelled really good? Just they being... smell good. They oh. smell like fresh air. Really? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. When my second or third one was born, I can't remember, they had a service in town that was called, it was called a Didi service. You could subscribe to it, and every day they would deliver you diapers, mm. clean diapers. You give them your wet, dirty diapers, and they, they, it was like a laundry service yeah. and delivered it. That's to really your door. smart. I think they still, I think there are still those things around nowadays. People and, who do yeah. cloth diapers. And and Max gave me, uh, my husband gave me a dyedy service for a gift. Really a nice gift. Yeah. I didn't have to. <laughs> That's very thoughtful. What a nice guy. That's awesome. Okay, so Grandma's gonna give us a little rundown really quick of her. Uh, like a little short history, a little rundown of her family and what it's made up of and kind of like where you grew up and things like that too. I grew up in a little tiny farming town named Queen Creek, Arizona. My father and his brothers farmed a great big farm there and we lived on the farm and that's where I grew up. So it was kind of an ideal all-American childhood. Mm -hmm. We could roam around all we wanted. We learned to shoot guns and we learned to swim in the irrigation ditch. Mm -hmm. And 
drink out of a garden hose and <laughs> all those things that are no-nos now. <laughs> but it was fun. We had a really good childhood. I got married really young. I was 17. Well, nearly 17. <laughs> In a couple oh of weeks. Oh my gosh. And um, we had five children. And so there was 12 years difference between the oldest and the young, youngest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's like a really shortened version. I mean, she wasn't your average, your average mom. You did lots of things on your own on the side, right? I did. Well, can you tell us, tell us a couple of the things you did for you? I learned to fly an airplane. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I had an airplane of my own, just a small little fun airplane. If anybody knows anything about them, it was a Cessna 140. Mm -hmm. And just flew around the valley, didn't go anywhere. It was just a hobby, fun thing to do. Yeah. Where we were living on the farm, sometimes we would fly into Phoenix to go to a movie or <laughs> take kids to dancing lessons or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that was really a fun thing to do, yeah. not out of the ordinary. Yeah, that's really fun. So yeah, she, I recently just learned that she would fly my aunt to her dance classes, which I thought was the coolest thing. I think that's <laughs> hilarious and so fun. And then my mom said you always had other things too. You had little jobs you do and things you do outside the home. Yeah, little hobbies and jobs. I didn't really work outside the home until Liz, my youngest, was in kindergarten and I in the late, late 80s, I was doing real estate and I had a chance to go to school to learn to be an appraiser. Mm -hmm. And so I went up to Colorado for uh, three weeks, took some classes so I could be certified. And then I was a real estate appraiser for the last 30 years that I worked. Okay. I feel like in all the TV shows you see out there and, and things, there's this pressure as a housewife to be like Miss Perfect and to have dinner on the table and your lipstick on and those types of things. Did you feel that pressure? <laughs> I didn't feel any pressure. I, I didn't really care what anybody else thought. Yeah. But I did my own thing. Yeah. And, cool. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. That it's not always what TV tells you it is. But in all the pictures I've seen, you always wore the cutest dresses and things. Were you, would you wear a dress every day? And... Yeah, I wore pretty much wore dresses. All the time. Yeah, they didn't let you wear pants to school until mm -hmm. I was out of high school. Oh, they didn't let you? It was like a no, rule, like a dress code. Like, yeah, it wasn't really a dress code, but the girls just didn't wear pants. Yeah. I was going to ask, how did that work with... Oh, you didn't nurse your babies that much, you told me. You no. mostly did formula? Okay, the, the only formula we could get was Similac, and so that's what we fed them. It was dry, mm -hmm. mixed mm -hmm. up the formula. Yeah. Uh, bottles were glass bottles, mm -hmm. rubber nipples, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, we used formula. Before that, they would take uh, canned milk and dilute it down a little bit, add k to sweeten it, and mm. that's what we fed the babies. Oh my gosh. I feel like they would not allow that these days. <laughs> no, that would not be. I mean, if you were desperate, that's good to know. If you well, don't have formula, you have. <laughs> and you don't have any nursing mothers around, you just water down the milk and add some k syrup. <laughs> and we didn't have any binkies. <laughs> yeah. We'd take a, a nipple, and stuff cotton in it and stick it in a little bit of honey. Oh. And that was. And you would suck on it? What the baby sucked on to keep them from crying. Oh, that's so funny. But then I was thinking, how did nursing work? And maybe you wouldn't know the answer to this, but like with your outfits, like with your clothes, would you just have to wear button up dresses so that you can unbutton to nurse them? Unbutton or pull. Pull the whole dress up? Or, well, or down. Or yeah, down. Okay. Because that just sounds so complicated to it have was. to deal with the dress code of the day in nursing. It was. You probably have to go into a closed room too just to mm -hmm. figure it out. Yeah, that takes well, a lot of time. Well, you certainly wouldn't nurse in public. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now, nowadays I, I nurse my baby anywhere. Yeah. Especially in Seattle, no one can say anything about it. <laughs> well, another thing that was so different 
is we didn't have car seats or seat belts in the cars. And so you can imagine the kids just roamed inside the back <laughs> seat. I would, I mean, you didn't know any different, but I feel like nowadays, like I love strapping my kids down, not, be, not to keep them safe, <laughs> just to keep them still. That would be so distracting. It's like double dangerous. Yeah, it was. And if you had a newborn or a baby who wasn't sitting up, you just stick them on the seat yes. right next to you. That is too funny. This has been so, I just, I just eat it up, you guys. I love talking to my grandma about the past and, and her experiences. Um, so I hope you like it too, because I'm loving this. I have a couple different segments that I do on my channel, um, on this, on this show. Um, one of them, I'm killing it and, and it's killing me. So what was something as a mom during your motherhood days that you just never liked doing that was just always the worst? I don't know how to say this, but I think that I've always had a pretty good self-esteem and looked at things on the positive side. And so there was never anything that I thought if I really wanted to do it, I could do it. And I don't remember anything that really stopped me mm. that, that I didn't think I was good at because... You just did it. And if you didn't like I, it, you just learned how to do it better. Right. Or figured it out so that it wasn't a problem. Right. Well, I love that. That's amazing. I love that answer. And I think that's so good for moms these days is that, I mean, sometimes you just have to get put some elbow grease into it and, and learn how to do it better and get better at it so it's not such a pain anymore. And sometimes we have to do things that we don't really want to do mm -hmm. or it's not our favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. But you can do it if you want to do it and have to do it. You can do it and be happy about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last question. If you, and maybe that's your advice to moms these days, but you have so many grandkids and great grandkids that are getting into this phase of life being a mom. Um, maybe what's some advice you would give them? What's one thing you would say that, you know, they can live by and, and have a happy motherhood? Enjoy it while it's here. Don't feel sorry for yourself for being stuck with these little children, but enjoy the Enjoy it now, mm -hmm. be happy. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say one thing. Saturday, my brother, was my brother's funeral. And I saw a niece there that I hadn't seen, a great niece for quite a while. And she had three little kids, but she was pregnant. And so I said, oh, Sarah, you're having another baby. She said, this is not my baby. And I looked at her kind of funny, and she said, my sister-in-law couldn't have any children, and I'm carrying her baby. And it's due in five weeks, and it's gonna, I'm all set for a C-section, and it's her baby. It's not mine. And I thought, wow, who would do that? What a great service to be able to do that for somebody mm -hmm. <laughs> makes me tear up to think about it. Yeah. But I thought in these days where there's so much selfishness and it's me, 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 mm -hmm. we all need to have a little more compassion and help somebody else if we can mm -hmm. and not be selfish. I love that. Thanks, Grandma. Words of wisdom, I, yeah, I, and I totally agree. And I don't, I don't want to say anything because I always add things to what my interviewees say and I just ruin it. So thanks, Grandma, that was really beautiful. Um, and that's where we're gonna end it. Grandma is the best. And I'm so grateful I got to set up all my gear and get a little, a little bit of her today. Love you, too. I love you, let's give me a hug. All right, everyone, you know what to do. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Go find me on Instagram. Um, share this video if you liked it. Share it with your families um, and other fellow mothers out there. I am super excited to continue on with these interviews. So come back for some more, and we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah,